Ticurb, lipatinib, is indicated in combination with capecitabine for the treatment of patients with advanced or metastatic breast cancer whose tumors overexpress HER2 and who have received prior therapy including an anthracycline, ataxane, and trastuzumab. Limitation of use. Patients should have disease progression on trastuzumab prior to initiation of treatment with Ticurb in combination with capecitabine. Important safety information. Warning. Hepatotoxicity has been observed in clinical trials and post-marketing experience. The hepatotoxicity may be severe and deaths have been reported. Causality of the deaths is uncertain. Please see important safety information and full prescribing information, including boxed warning on the Ticurb website. Important safety information, including boxed warning, is also presented at the end of this video. Ticurb lipatinib is a dual HER2 and EGFR targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It inhibits the intracellular tyrosine kinase domains of both HER2 and EGFR. HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer is characterized by the overexpression of HER2 receptors on the cell surface. There may be up to a hundred fold increase over their number on healthy breast cells. Through dimerization with other HER family receptors, HER2 receptors initiate a cascade of molecular signals within the cell that stimulate growth and cell division. The increase in cell signaling from HER2 overexpression results in uncontrolled proliferation of HER2 positive tumor cells and a rapidly progressing aggressive form of breast cancer. Ticurb is a small molecule that can pass through the cell membrane. Once inside the cell, Ticurb binds to the intracellular tyrosine kinase domains of HER2 and EGFR, where it is believed to interrupt certain downstream signaling pathways. As a result, Ticurb inhibits HER2 and EGFR-driven tumor cell growth and increases apoptosis in HER2-positive breast cancer cells. The growth inhibitory effects of Ticurb were also evaluated in breast cancer cell lines selected for long-term growth in trastuzumab-containing medium. In these cell lines, Ticurb retains significant activity in vitro, suggesting that it does not have cross-resistance with trastuzumab. An additive effect was demonstrated in an in vitro study when Ticurb and 5-FU, the active metabolite of capecitabine, were used in combination in the four tumor lines tested. Through its intracellular mechanism of action, Ticurb has been shown to deliver anti-proliferative effects in HER2-positive breast cancer cells in vitro. As a dual HER2 and EGFR-targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitor, Ticurb works inside cells, where it inhibits HER2 and EGFR-driven signaling pathways, helps arrest cell growth, and increases apoptosis. Ticurb is indicated in combination with capecitabine for the treatment of patients with advanced or metastatic breast cancer whose tumors overexpress HER2 and who have received prior therapy, including an anthracycline, ataxane, and trastuzumab. Limitation of use. Patients should have disease progression on trastuzumab prior to initiation of treatment with Ticurb in combination with capecitabine. Important safety information. Warning. Hepatotoxicity has been observed in clinical trials and post-marketing experience. The hepatotoxicity may be severe and deaths have been reported. Causality of the deaths is uncertain. Contraindication. Ticurb is contraindicated in patients with known severe hypersensitivity, for example, anaphylaxis, to this product or any of its components. Decreased left ventricular ejection fraction, LVEF. Ticurb has been reported to decrease LVEF. In clinical trials, greater than 57% of LVEF decreases occurred within the first 12 weeks of treatment. Use caution if administering to patients with conditions that could impair LVEF. Confirm normal LVEF before starting Ticurb and continue evaluations during treatment. Hepatotoxicity. Hepatotoxicity, alanine transaminase, ALT, or aspartate transaminase, AST, greater than three times the upper limit of normal, and total bilirubin greater than two times the upper limit of normal, has been observed in clinical trials, less than 1% of patients, and post-marketing experience. 
The hepatotoxicity may be severe and deaths have been reported. Causality of the deaths is uncertain. The hepatotoxicity may occur days to several months after initiation of treatment. Liver function tests, transiminases, bilirubin, and alkaline phosphatase should be monitored before initiation of treatment, every four to six weeks during treatment, and as clinically indicated. If changes in liver function are severe, therapy with Ticurb should be discontinued and patients should not be retreated with Ticurb. Patients with severe hepatic impairment. If Ticurb is to be administered to patients with severe pre-existing hepatic impairment, dose reduction should be considered. Diarrhea. Diarrhea has been reported during treatment with Ticurb. The diarrhea may be severe and deaths have been reported. Diarrhea generally occurs during early treatment with Ticurb with almost half of those patients with diarrhea first experiencing it within six days. This usually lasts four to five days. Lepatinib-induced diarrhea is usually low grade, with grade three and four diarrhea occurring in less than 10% and less than 1% of patients, respectively. Prop treatment of diarrhea with antidiarrheal agents such as loperamide after the first unformed stool is recommended. Severe cases of diarrhea may require administration of oral or intravenous electrolytes and fluids. Use of antibiotics such as fluoroquinolones, especially if diarrhea is persistent beyond 24 hours, there is fever, or grade 3 or 4 neutropenia, and interruption or discontinuation of therapy with Ticurb. Interstitial lung disease, pneumonitis. Ticurb has been associated with interstitial lung disease and pneumonitis. Patients should be monitored for pulmonary symptoms indicative of interstitial lung disease or pneumonitis. Discontinue Ticurb in patients who experience pulmonary symptoms indicative of greater than or equal to grade 3 interstitial lung disease, pneumonitis. QT prolongation. Ticurb prolongs the QT interval in some patients and should be administered with caution in patients who have or may develop QT prolongation, including patients with hypokalemia or hypomagnesemia, congenital long QT syndrome, patients taking cumulative high-dose anthracycline, antiarrhythmics, or other products that lead to QT prolongation. Hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia should be corrected prior to administration, and electrocardiogram and electrolyte monitoring should be considered. Severe cutaneous reactions have been reported. Discontinue Ticurb if life-threatening reactions, for example, erythema multiform, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, or toxic epidermal necrolysis are suspected. Pregnancy. Ticurb can cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman. Women should be advised not to become pregnant when taking Ticurb. If this drug is used during pregnancy, or if the patient becomes pregnant while taking this drug, the patient should be apprised of the potential hazard to the fetus. Adverse Reactions The most common adverse reactions, greater than or equal to 10% during therapy with Ticurb plus capecitabine versus capecitabine, were diarrhea, 65%, 40%, palmer plantar erythrodysesthesia, 53%, 51%, Nausea, 44%, 43%, rash, 28%, 14%, vomiting, 26%, 21%, fatigue, 23%, 25%, mucosal inflammation, 15%, 12%, stomatitis, 14%, 11%, pain in extremity, 12%, 7%, dyspnea, 12%, 8%, back pain, 11%, 6%, dyspepsia, 11%, 3%, dry skin, 10%, 6%, and insomnia, 10%, 6%. The most common grade 3 and 4 adverse reactions with Ticurb plus capecitabine, compared to capecitabine, were diarrhea, 14%, 10%, and palmer plantar erythrodysesthesia, 12%, 14%. Laboratory abnormalities. Laboratory abnormalities during therapy with Ticurb plus capecitabine versus capecitabine included increased AST, 49%, 43%, increased ALT, 37%, 33%, and increased total bilirubin, 45%, 30%. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning, on the Ticurb website.